Ace 83 apparently is the first localized myostatin inhibitor. What is up everyone, it's Russo. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 19 to 7 water.com, keep on code Russo. ASMR spritz, intelligent elephant carbon, hear your noises, but you have to buy it in the description to smell it. All right, today I'm going into the next big thing in muscle building drugs, myostatin pathway. Myostatin is the ultimate genetic limiting factor to how much muscle you can carry. I'll have Andrew throw up a picture of the Belgian blue cow and the normal cow. The only differences between these two cows is that one has a chronic myostatin deficiency, basically doesn't make any myostatin at all, which makes the muscles grow out of control. This is being implemented in a bodybuilding pharmacology via myostatin inhibitors. Now, everyone has seen my logs of YK11, which is supposedly an oral myostatin inhibitor, and I'll have Andrew throw up a suggested vid so you can watch my experience with YK. Basically, the problem with YK11 is it's systemic, meaning it impacts the entire body, not just localized in the skeletal muscle. This has always led me toward the side of caution with YK, as well as just showcasing that we don't want everything to grow. We just want our skeletal muscles to grow. And if we're growing our heart and our organs alongside that by inhibiting myostatin, then that's doing more harm than good. However, the myostatin pathway is so crazy because again, I'll have Andrew threw up the two cows. That cow's not exercising any more than the other cow. They're just walking around, grazing on grass. The only difference is the myostatin level in the body. It's the ultimate, like going to the very pivotal thing of what tells your body how much muscle it can or cannot sustain. So that means that technically, maybe 20 years from now, there will be a localized myostatin inhibitor that you could just sit around on the couch all day and have bigger muscles than a bodybuilder in the 1990s abusing gear, dosage dependent. And if it's localized to only skeletal muscle, then you basically cheat coded all of bodybuilding. This is where bodybuilding is going when it comes to enhanced pharmacology. And I don't see myostatin not being explored by the bodybuilders when there's so much promise on I don't have to tear apart my joints to grow more muscle. I don't have to do any of this stuff. All I have to do is take this drug and sit on the couch and my muscles grow. It's definitely gonna have people lining up to be the lab rat for that. So I've already talked about my experience with YK11, super sketchy compound. I definitely noticed a odd, crazy dry look on it. I could not get fat on it when I did the injectable nano YK11, which those vlogs are some of my most popular vlogs on the channel because that YK11 is so sketchy and new. That's not the only myostatin inhibitor out there. The other myostatin inhibitor that I know right off the top of my bat, that I know right off the top of my head is injectable folistatin, which folistatin and myostatin are the pendulums that go against each other, as well as ACE31. These are all systemic, they're not localized. I was recently sent by one of my subscribers, Ace83. Ace83 apparently is the first localized myostatin inhibitor. Meaning if I had lacking biceps, triceps, if I put it localized, apparently it would stay and do the myostatin effect on the localized area I injected in. This is showing a lot of promise and there already is a human trial on it that I will have Andrew play a snippet from and link it down below. So my question to you, anyone out there, do you have experience with ACE83? If so, what do you think of ACE83 and how would you compare it to something like YK11 or ACE31 or just straight up injecting folistatin? Again, when we're messing around with the myostatin pathway, it's getting very, very sketchy because this is a genetic limiting factor and you don't want to have so much muscle that your body can't sustain it. That's why myostatin exists in the first place. ACE83 theoretically, could completely change the game if it is worth the hype. Imagine you're on grams of steroids and then you add in ACE83 to the localized muscles you want to selectively grow while not having it go systemic throughout your entire body. That sounds like a big game changer to me because really we have IGF-1 already, which is the most powerful GH pathway. 
besides HGH, but HGH IGF-1 is already being implemented. We have SARMs and TREN, which are some of the most powerful androgens. And now we're stepping into the myostan pathway, getting to localize agents. When we look at all these muscle building pathways, maxing them all out theoretically on a genetic prodigy could yield an even bigger bodybuilder as far as pro open bodybuilders go to grace a stage. And while I say that's healthy, no. Bodybuilding is not about health, it's about extreme performance. When we see these myostatin inhibiting agents, the sky seems to be the limit. And it seems to be, can the body support you destroying myostatin and having to feed all that tissue, having the CNS have to keep up with all that tissue, et cetera, et cetera. But ACE 83 shows a lot of promise and I want to know if anyone already has experience with it down below. I will see you guys in my next video.